Hi, I'm David Levin, and welcome to another earnest episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes tales of TV that have rarely been revealed until now. Today, my conversation with Ernest Borgnine continues as he talks about shooting McHale's Navy on the Universal back lot, revealing the special effects stories and secrets, which are not so secret, why the studio made a McHale's Navy movie without McHale. And Borgnine talks about his other series, Airwolf and Single Guy, revealing how on that show they would make up their own lines. No kidding. We actually shot uh, McHale's Navy, and I'm giving away secrets now, you know? We actually shot it in the back lot of, uh, of Universal, in one of those little ponds over there. We had a boat attached over there. See what they did? Uh, we went out and made what they call plates, P-L-A-T-E-S. And these plates uh, uh, show us underway, you know, and uh, they take the, the wake, showing the wake of the boat and everything else, or the spray of the boat of the head, and, and, and maneuvering and everything else. We do all that. And then what they do is they make a film of it, the whole film, so that it just revolves around and around in a, a, a machine that goes beyond, beyond in back of the, uh, of, the, of the boat that you're shooting on. In other words, they'd have a mock-up of us on the, on the boat. And they would shoot from the mock-up back and you'd see the water in the back as we were maneuvering and everything else. And it would be in, all in, in coordination with the, with the camera up front and the camera in the back. And bam, you'd think you were out at sea. See, I'm giving, I'm giving away trade secrets again. Isn't it awful? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way we did it, you know? And people said, my God, you were, and I was just to say, I'd tell them we were out in the Pacific Ocean. You know, I didn't want to, you know, disturb their 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 fed, their sense of uh, of uh, uh, having seen this thing, you know, and then say, oh, it was shot in the back lot of Universal. What a shame! But, you know, yeah, it was terrible. You know I even went on the Universal tour back when you know. The, sure, the, sure. And they said this is where they shot McKell's Navy, and I'm looking at him like, no. Said. <laughs> And people would say, no, how can that be? They were out in the water. Sure. Uh, you guys got a couple of spin-off movies, right? Yeah, we had uh, two movies made of it. Uh, I was in the first one, and the second one, they wouldn't pay my price because they didn't really want me in the movie. They wanted just Joe Flynn and, and, uh, and uh, Tim Conway. So I said, well, you won't pay my, my thing. You know, Sorry. So they made the film, and it was absolute loss. Uh, they they yeah, went nowhere with it, and um, because they had nobody to spin off of, you see, they didn't have a McHale's Navy, a McHale to spin off of, and um, so it's a good lesson for uh, those uh, so-called second bananas uh, that um, can can really be funny, but they have somebody to spin off of. Don Knotts was great. Providing he had, um, who do you call the spin-off of, you know? Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith. If he didn't have Andy Griffith, he wouldn't be anything, you know? Uh, so those things happen, you know? And uh, uh, But Tim, Tim could carry his own. He, 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 he really was good. Of course, when he got onto the... Um, Carpenter. Yeah, when he got on that show with, um, what's her name? With Harvey Corman and Carol. Harvey Corman and all that. Man, they, he was off again, you know. It was marvelous, just marvelous to watch. You've done some other shows besides Mikhail. You did Airwolf, was a great show. I did Airwolf. Uh, we'd still be shooting it, but uh, that poor soul that, uh, that was uh, the, playing the pilot, and um, uh, he, he just, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, he just fell by the roadside, and it was a shame because he, was, he had a great big talent, a wonderful talent. But um, he, you know, just fell off by the roadside, and that was too bad. Um, I made another one called, what the devil was it called? Well, I, I was a doorman. Single guy. Single guy, the single guy. I went up, they called me in to, to, for an interview, and I said, sure, we'll go. 
So I went in and I sat and I said, I'm Bernice Borgnine waiting for my interview with, oh yes, yes, so they're right now they're in the midst of a, of a great big conference and all. And I said, I'll wait, I'll wait, you know. And uh, they called in again. They said, well, they're still in a conference. I said, okay, don't worry about it. And I waited a while longer and I, I must have waited a, a good over an hour, I guess. Finally, I said to, to the little girl, I said, here's the script. Thank you very much. Tell them I was here. Bye-bye, you know, and I left. About two hours later, I got a telephone call <laughs> from the producer. You've got the part. Don't worry, you've got the part. <laughs> they never even saw me. <laughs> they said, you've got the part. Don't worry. And I had a wonderful time. Really, we had a wonderful cast, and uh, 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 I can't remember their names right now off the bat, but... Uh, it's a shame, really. Uh, I know one was called Johnny... Ray. Uh, golly. Anyway, he's a single guy. Uh, if you saw it, you laughed. I'm sure you did. Because it was a very funny show. and um, It got canceled way before it should have. That was a very good show. Yeah, yeah, show. yeah. It was fun. And we, we did it for about a year and a half. And then we were... We were making up our own lines as we went along because uh, it seemed that nobody had an interest in this whatsoever. And, and they just didn't, they lost interest in us. And our producer went off and did something else and, and everybody came walking by and then, and first thing you know, we were left by the roadside. Goodbye and thanks a million. You guys would make up your own lines? You we had made up our own lines as we went along, sure. Well, why not, you know? Give us a gist of a story, and, and, and if you're any good, we can make up our own lines, and you'd be surprised. It's been done a number of times, you know? And um, at least I've been with people that have, you know? I always make up my own lines. And if I, if I think I can better the thing, I bring it to my producer or to my director first, and I'll say, please, I, you know, I think that it would work better this way. Not that I have anything against writers. I think they're the cream of the, of, the, of the whole crop. But the idea is that if you can help a writer and if you can help the, the picture and if you can help everything in, within the picture itself, the structure, hey, you're helping everybody. And uh, that's what it's all about. A lot of people don't look at it that way, you know. A lot of people, of course, uh, actors especially, get the idea, you know, that they've got to be photographed a certain way and they've got to say a certain line a certain way and they've got to do this and they've got to do that. And the first thing you know, uh, it all falls apart and it isn't worth a, a nickel. But if you can bring your, your inventiveness, your imagination, your everything that you can to the part, that's what builds up the whole thing and that's what it's wonderful that that that's that's why people oh my god wasn't that good that's what it's all about not self but for the good of the show this is what counts so many people forget that it's got to be you know i'm only good on my left side here please <laughs> Oh, dear. Next time, Ernest Borgnine talks about his series Future Cop with John Amos, his philosophy of life, and why he loved doing characters on SpongeBob SquarePants and All Dogs Go to Heaven. You gotta love this guy. Till then, subscribe, become a patron, and drop me a note about how you're liking or not liking the show. I'll see you then.